we continue our discussion of articles from signatures the prescribed textbook for the general english of the third semester students of the undergraduate courses of the university of calicut signatures the course book contains a number of memoirs autobiographical writings and speeches of uh, great personalities in the first lecture we studied the word a memoir by pablo neruda and we know that the word is about the significance of uh, language and what language does to humanity or human civilization in general today we look at another very important essay which has a lot of significance in the contemporary world and it is written by one of the greatest personalities of uh, the world i said greatest personalities because this writer is not just a writer not just a novelist because this writer is a person who has dedicated her life for the uh, 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 improvement of uh, the world for changing the world and today we discuss the essay by janet armstrong and janet armstrong's essay i stand with you against the disorder has a lot of significance and the very title helps us to of course uh, know the fact that realize the fact that we have disorder all around us and this particular essay is specifically written for the indigenous people of uh, okanagan and we have to understand the fact that okanagan is the very place where janet armstrong is born and the okanagan community they are the indigenous community in the british columbia in canada and the okanagan people today are being exploited by the uh, the developed people especially people from europe and uh, the west and uh, janet armstrong very powerfully criticizes the western philosophy and education system and she is asking her own okanagan community as well as the world to be more eco friendly and to be more uh, of course uh, uh, kind sympathetic empathetic towards men especially the very indigenous people in the okanagan peninsula janet armstrong was born in 1948 on the okanagan reserve in british columbia in canada and we know that janet armstrong is a writer an indigenous civil rights activist a sculptor and an educationist and uh, janet armstrong is the first native woman novelist from canada her novel slash of 1985 was the very first novel that was written by any indigenous people from the okanagan area in in canada and uh, she has of course a lot of significance as a writer and uh, she paved the way for writing to the okanagan indigenous people and besides being a great uh, novelist or a writer janet armstrong is referred to as an educator and protector of the indigenous people she lives her life to educate and protect the indigenous people of okanagan her life has been an endless campaign to alter the deep rooted prejudices and wrong notions associated with the aboriginal people and her main objective in writing is to educate young people about native culture and history 
She received the traditional education from her own Okanagan elders. And as a result of that, she learned the Okanagan Indian language. And she speaks it very fluently. And she uh, helps us understand the way Okanagan people look at things. And uh, of course, how they understand everything in the community through of course the Okanagan language and she says that the Okanagan language is unique itself and she's trying her best to preserve the Okanagan language and she's helping us the readers understand what they mean everything in their Okanagan language. Janet Armstrong condemns the Western philosophers and their educational objectives. And she says that uh, the Western philosophies or the educational systems and methods of uh, the Western people is just to, this is, that is to, to exploit the people of uh, the uh, Okanagan Peninsula. She is finding fault with uh, the Western philosophy and the education systems. And she says that the education system of uh, Europe, the Western philosophy or uh, the Western education system serve to alienate the Indians from their indigenous uh, society, their indigenous selves. And uh, of course, uh, the Western philosophy is just isolating them or just devastating the Okanagan community. And she says that Western philosophy and education systems are not suitable for we, the indigenous people in the Okanagan Peninsula that is in British Columbia in Canada. And Janet Armstrong believes that a connection can be established between the Aboriginals and the Europeans. She speaks about the Okanagan people and of course uh, the Europeans, right? And she says that there is of course an unbreakable connection between the people in the Okanagan region, the Aboriginals of uh, the uh, so-called the Indians of uh, the uh, Canadian Peninsula, the Okanagan Peninsula, they are just uh, unbreakably connected to the people in Europe. And still, despite of this kind of unbreakable connection with the people in Europe, the aborigines, aboriginals or the indigenous people of the Okanagan Peninsula are being exploited and brutally devastated by the European education system and philosophy and Janet Armstrong is bemoaning the kind of destruction that is happening in Okanagan Peninsula. According to Janet Armstrong, a democracy should respect and protect any individual's rights and if a single person is denied the uh, rights, the democracy guarantee that democracy jeopardizes the rights of others, including that of women, minority, and others. And Janet Armstrong is just becoming a champion, a protector, and a person who is speaking for the preservation, conservation, and protection of the rights of the human beings, no matter whether it's a poor person, whether it is an aboriginal, whether it is an indigenous person, a woman or a uh, sick person. She says that everybody is having individual rights and any democracy has to protect the individual rights of everybody. Janet Armstrong is a professor of indigenous studies and uh, she is the chairperson of the Canada Research of uh, Indigenous Philosophy and uh, she is in fact uh, uh, having an unflinching loyalty to the Okanagan community and all other similar indigenous tribes who are compelled to become cheap labor force and uh, who face the threat of dispossession becoming 
the victims of privatization of land and thoughtless exploitation of resources. So she is asking her people, like the Okanagan people, the aboriginals, to be very cautious of the shrewd, selfish plans of the Europeans as well as the Western people. And the westernization of undeveloped cultures is only a cunning pretext to generate new markets. Janet Armstrong understands the fact that uh, the uh, globalization, liberalization, etc. is just uh, spoiling or rather just destroying the very culture of the indigenous people of Okanagan. And she says that we do not want any kind of uh, uh, development that uh, comes from the Western philosophy or education system. The Okanagans, according to Janet Armstrong, are people who promote bio-regionally self-sufficient economies and the knowledge that the total community must be engaged in order to attain sustainability. So she is just uh, asserting the significance of uh, being eco-friendly, being of course uh, 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 nice to the environment. And uh, the objective of the essay, I stand with you against disorder by Janet Armstrong is to declare solidarity against the violence of cultural imperialism. She aspires to alter the prevalent paradigms of development and progress by joining hands with the Okanagans. So now, of course, we will just look at the very essay Janet Armstrong has written. And this particular essay has a lot of significance to each of us because this essay helps us to understand the life of the Okanagan people their beliefs, their creeds, their language and whatever their uh, uh, language refers to. And in the very beginning of the essay, Janet Armstrong tells us about her own life, her birth, her uh, parental background and the significance of all that in her life. Let's just go for a discussion of the essay, I Stand With You Against the Disorder by Janet Armstrong. In the very opening paragraph, Janet Armstrong says, I am from Okanagan, a part of British Columbia in Canada. And she is just describing the very geographical area where she is born and she helps us understand the very flora and fauna and the very terrain, the very landscape where she is born. And around the place where Janet Armstrong is born are rocky mountain ranges. There are a lot of huge mountains around the very village where Janet Armstrong is born. And one of the mountain ranges is the Cascades. And another mountain range is the Selkirks. And between these two huge mountain ranges, the Cascades and the Selkirks, is the village of uh, Janet Armstrong. And uh, she also tells us that a river is just passing through the village where she is born. And the main river that flows through the Okanagan land is the Columbia River and she says that her father's people are mountain people. Okay, and that shows their affinity to mountain, their intimacy, their relationship with the very nature of the soil. So her father's people are mountain people. They live in the mountain, they work in the soil, they go hunting in the jungle, so their father's people, her, Janet Armstrong's father's people are mountain people. And now she also speaks about her mother. My mother is a river Indian. All right, what does it mean? It means 
her mother's parents and uh, uh, the people, her mother's people are fishermen. They often go to the river, the tributaries of the Columbia River, and they depend on the river for their living. They are fishermen. So my father's people are mountain people. My mother is a river Indian. And uh, my father's people are hunters. Okay? So with this, we get an idea about the very background of uh, Janet Armstrong and her people, the Okanagan people. The Okanagan people are aboriginals, the indigenous people, okay, who are the very son and daughter of uh, the land, the soil, the earth. They depend on the land, they depend on the forest, they depend on the river for their living. And they love the land, they love the soil, they love the forest, they love the river, and they believe that the soil is the flesh of the Okanagan people. They believe that the water in the rivers is the blood of the Okanagan people. It is the blood of uh, their ancestors. It is the blood of themselves. It is the blood of the posterity, the coming generation. That shows how they look at the earth, the environment, they look at uh, the earth, the environment as something that is divine, sacred or holy. My name is passed on from my father's side of the family. That's about Janet Armstrong's name. And she is of course called Janet Armstrong, but we have to understand the very fact that Janet Armstrong is having an Okanagan name, a, a very indigenous, aboriginal name. And that name is, of course, coming from her father's side. And we understand that the name of Janet Armstrong, the Okanagan name of Janet Armstrong is my, that is, of course, Janet Armstrong's great-grandmother's name. And from this, again, we understand that what is the very culture and practice and conventional tradition of the Okanagans. They just uh, continue their legacy. The name of the grandfather or the great-grandfather is given to the grandchild or the great-grandchild and they are very proud of the very name of their ancestors. And uh, she tells us again, I am a daughter of mountains and rivers. So we have to understand the fact that Janet Armstrong is a representative of uh, the Aboriginal people, the Okanagan people, and she is of course the daughter of uh, the mountains and the rivers. We the Okanagan people are the ones who are dream and land together. This is the very basic principle and creed of the Okanagan people. The Okanagan people believe that they are the ones who are dream and the land together. They are the dream and the land together. This is how they just describe them. So maybe we have a question like what do the Okanagan people believe about themselves? We have to understand the fact that the Okanagan people believe that they are the ones who are dream and land together. Okay, so the Okanagan people are connected to, very much connected to the land and they are also the dream. What is a dream? Everybody dream about something, right? Each of us dream about something. So they say that their life on the earth and their life yet to come is connected and they are the ones who are dream and the land together. And we understand that the Okanagan people are the living, dreaming, earth pieces. Okay, so Okanagan people are little parts of the earth. They are earth pieces. They come from the earth and they are living, dreaming earth pieces, right? So the earth has dreams. The earth has great ambition, great dream. Okay, so Okanagan people are also part of the earth. We come from earth, we go to earth 
and we are living, dreaming earth pieces. This is the very basic concept and belief of the Okanagan people. The Okanagan people believe that they are the living, dreaming earth pieces. And they also believe that, I'm just sharing the very basic creeds and beliefs of the Okanagan people. Each Okanagan is part of the Okanagan community. And this is again another very important content, uh, 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 important fact. Maybe when we think of ourselves, we understand that some of the people, rather most of the people in the 21st century, we live in our own uh, cocoons. We are isolated sometimes, right? We are alienated sometimes, right? We are happy with our own family, maybe our own friends. We don't have a, a very community life. We don't give any significance to the community. We just try to, of course, uh, limit to ourselves. But the Okanagan people, they believe that uh, the individual is not very significant. What is significant is the community. And we know that they are part of the Okanagan. Each and every Okanagan is part of the community. There's a deep connection between the Okanagan society and the environment and the earth. So to, to Okanagan people, they are part of the community. The community is part of the earth. So earth is not something that is separate from the human beings. Earth is part of uh, the human beings and each and every human being is part of the community, the society and everything is connected. A human being is connected to his own family and the family is connected to of course the greater family that is the society. Society is of course connected to the human community and the human community is connected to the earth. So we have to love ourselves, we have to love others, we have to love uh, the community, we have to care for the community, we also have to care for the very earth because we are dreaming, living, dreaming pieces of the earth. This is the very basic belief of the Okanagan people and because of this reason Okanagans cannot be rude to the earth. They can never do anything that is harming the earth. And uh, now we move forward about the discussion of the very concepts and beliefs of the Okanagan people. And she says that, Janet Armstrong says that each Okanagan self, the Okanagan self, what is the Okanagan, Okanagan self? What is the Okanagan individual? An individual, to be very precise, any Okanagan individual, the self of any Okanagan is four main capacities that operate together. So any individual is a combination of, uh, a union of four capacities operating together. Okay, let's look at what are these four capacities that operate together in any individual. Number one, the physical self. Based on the Okanagan belief, every individual is having four capacities. Capacity number one is the operating, uh, the physical self. Number two, the emotional self. Number three, the thinking intellectual self. And number four, the spiritual self. This is the very deep-rooted belief of the Okanagan people about the very individual. Any individual, any Okanagan self is in fact uh, a capacity of four. It is in fact an association of four capacities. The physical self, the emotional self, the thinking intellectual self, and the spiritual self. So these people believe that their physical self is connected to their emotional self and their emotional and physical is connected to the mind, the intellectual self and the three physical, emotional and intellectual is connected to the spiritual. This is the belief of the Okanagan people. They believe in the body, they believe in the emotion, the heart, they believe in the mind they also believe in the spirit and they believe that everything, all these four capacities are connected. That is an individual. Similarly, they believe that 
the very individual is part of uh, the entire others. Everybody is connected like an individual is having four main capacities. Okay, now we continue our discussion what the Okanagans teach themselves. What are the basic uh, ideas of the Okanagans and what do they teach their children and what do they teach themselves? Okanagans teach that the body is earth itself. Our body is earth itself. This is the very fundamental belief of the Okanagan people. They believe that this body, the human body, is earth. We come from the earth. We are everything that surrounds us. Okay, look around. We can see a number of trees, a number of plants, a number of uh, animals and creatures and uh, of course underneath our feet we have the soil and a human being is part of everything that is surrounding us and we are our body is earth itself right this is and if our body is earth itself how can we root to the earth so this particular essay has a lot of significance because we today are being disturbed by threats like global warming, a number of climatic changes, a lot of problems due to climatic changes, problems caused by pollution, contamination, a lot of uh, very, very mortal diseases as a result of uh, uh, inadvertent use of chemicals and pesticides. Okay, so we shall not use anything of that sort. We believe that the earth is part of our body. So the Okanagan teach that the body is earth itself. We are everything that surrounds us. We cannot continue as an individual life form. We dissipate back into the larger self. So we are individuals and we live our life with the four main capacities that is of course the physical self, the emotional self, the thinking intellectual self and the spiritual self. We live our life. We are part of the soil. We are part of everything that surrounds us. And once we just uh, end or rather we die, okay, that is of course uh, not the end or the, that is not uh, death, right? They believe that, okay, we are just going back to the larger self and what is that larger self that larger self is the earth itself so we come from earth we go to earth no one dies forever we live our life because we are part of everything and we just continue our life even after our death in that which surround us in the soil in the trees in the water in all the creatures and objects the living and the dead or rather the the biotic and the abiotic around us that is the basic belief of the Okanagan people that is the body is earth itself and we are everything that surrounds us the Okanagans believe that the body is earth itself and they believe that uh, each every each and every individual is part of uh, the earth and they have another very important belief and they believe that uh, the body is sacred our body is sacred we know that every individual is a combination of uh, four capacities operating together the physical self the emotional self, the intellectual thinking self, and of course the spiritual self. All right, that is an individual. And they believe that the body is sacred. The body of everyone is sacred. And when we believe that our body is sacred, how can we just harm our body? So Okanagan people do not harm their body. They believe that their body is sacred and now that they believe that their body is sacred they do not harm themselves so if you believe that your body is sacred how can you of course uh, look at the body of others 
as uh, unholy or not sacred. So they believe that the body of everybody is sacred. And they believe that everyone's body is part of the earth, part of the soil. Everything is from the soil. So they believe their body is sacred, that their body is sacred. So if once, if my body is sacred, my brothers or my sisters or my or, or the body of everybody in my community is sacred. And now that I believe that my body is sacred and the body of everybody in the community is sacred and we believe that our body is from the soil, our body is just part of the soil. So how can we just harm ourselves or our brothers or sisters or the people in the society, people in the community and how can we harm the earth? That is the very fundamental question the Okanagan people ask. This is the fundamental belief or creed that is just driving the Okanagan community as a spiritual force. The body is the great gift of our existence. This is yet another notion of the Okanagan people. Our body is the great gift of our existence. And our word for body literally means land dreaming capacity. So what does body in Okanagan language mean? The body in the Okanagan language means land dreaming capacity. So that very particular Okanagan expression of body helps us to understand the kind of significance these people give to body. Body is nothing but land dreaming capacity and land is of course sacred. All right. So we come from the soil, we come from the land, we go to the soil, we go to the land and our body is land dreaming capacity. All right. So we have to be nice to the soil. We have to be nice to ourselves because our body is sacred. The soil is also sacred. The earth is also sacred. The thinking intellectual self or mind, in fact, is having a peculiar expression in the Okanagan language. And they, in the Okanagan language, call the mind or the thinking intellectual self the spark that ignites. Look at the very good expression. So Okanagan language mind, the term is referred to as spark that ignites. It's absolutely. We in our English language or in any other languages calls mind, mind. Or rather we say that it is of course the intelligence. Mind is the intelligence. But look at the very ex expression for mind in the Okanagan language. What is mind in the Okanagan language? What do the Okanagan people call mind? The spark that ignites. Absolutely. And we understand that it is because of the intellectual capacity of man that all the invention, scientific technology has blessed us. Are we being blessed by all that? We have to think about that. Anyway, the intellectual self in Okanagan language is the spark that ignites. And the Okanagan people, according to Janet Armstrong, teach that each person is born into a family and a community. We are not just born to our dad and mom. We are not born to our parents. We are not born in a family. We are born in a community. This is the belief of the Okanagan people. Each and every individual is born in a community. And we must be always connected to the very community we are born in. Yes, we are always connected to our family, but similarly, we must be connected to our community as such. And from this understand, we, we know that community is more significant to the Okanagan people than the family. Of course, family is important. It is important uh, uh, all the time, but similarly, the community has also to be important in the life of everybody. The capacity to bond is critical to individuals' wellness, our wellness, our health, our happiness, our peace, all that 
is the result of our bond, our capacity to bond, our capacity to be united, our capacity to be one with the community. So the capacity to bond is critical to individual wellness. If the individual is not, not connected to the family, if the individual is not connected to the community, if the individual is not connected to the surroundings, if the individual is not connected to the very soil which is of course sacred as the body, he won't be healthy, he won't be well, he wouldn't have the individual wellness. We are all very careful about being healthy, being having wellness, but we can never have wellness if we are not being connected to the community or the very people and objects around us. Without wellness, the person is said to be crippled, incapacitated and lifeless. So, if we do not have uh, wellness, if we are not connected to the other, if we are not connected to the community, we are not connected to the environment, we are not connected to, of course, the soil, we are crippled, incapacitated and lifeless. And the wonderful belief of the Okanagan people, not to have community or families to be scattered or falling apart. We fall apart, we wither away, we die, we perish. We are not having a community or family. We must have a family, we must have a community, we must be connected, we must be just uh, 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 very, very close and intimate to the very people and objects around us because our body is sacred and our body is of course part of the body of everybody around us. So the Okanagan referred to the relationship to others by a word that means our one skin. This is another wonderful belief of the Okanagan people. They say that we are related to everybody. They, they just refer to relationships, right, okay? We are related, right? We, have, we speak about blood relationship. We also speak about, right, uh, friendly relationship or relationship within the family, relationship in a community. And uh, the very term for Okanagans to refer to relationship is our one skin. What does it mean? We have a skin, right? If part of our skin is just harmed, if there is a pain in maybe one part of body, all right, that pain is everywhere in our body. Similarly, we have our skin and uh, uh, our skin is connected to, of course, the skin of the members of our family. Similarly, the very skin is the skin of the people of the community. Similarly, the very skin is the skin of uh, all the living things in this particular earth on this earth. So we are unbreakably connected to every human being, every animal, every creature, everything. All right. So there is no separation between a living and uh, a non-living. We are all connected. Our one skin. We have just one skin. All right. So this is a wonderful notion that helps us to be helpful or uh, sympathetic or empathetic or kind to the fellow beings as well as the very earth itself because we are part of all the people who live before us. We are part of uh, all the objects and things around us. We are also part of uh, the people to come, the, the children to be born and of course the trees and plants and creatures to be born. So our one skin, everything in the earth is okay in the past people and objects and things and trees and rivers and uh, all the things living and non-living in the past lived and uh, just perished in the past just present right now and yet to come in future are connected we all have this one skin so this is one of the wonderful ideas of the Okanagan people that just uh, made them eco-friendly and uh, human friendly so a human being cannot exploit another human being because the other is of course part of uh, the self. This means that if we believe that our skin is of course the skin of the other, our skin is the skin of course the earth, this means that we share more than a place. 
we share a physical tie that is uniquely human. It also means that the bond of community and family includes the history of the many. All right, our history is not the history of our family alone. Our history is the history of our community. All right, so we have just one skin. Okay, and uh, the uh, speaker Janet Armstrong very very emphatically asserts the fact that we are connected to all the people who came before us and all the people who are with us right now and all the people who are coming to have maybe a life here so we came those who came before us and the many ahead of us share one flesh and now of course we come to the end of the essay in which Janet Arms, uh, Arms, uh, Armstrong uh, emphatically asserts the fact that our most serious teaching is that community comes first in our choices then the family so what is significant is the community only then the family and then ourselves as individuals because without community and family we care we are truly not human so this is the most important principle we have to understand to anokanagan the community is important then the family then individuals right so maybe it is the other way in our place right maybe the individual is significant first then the family then the society but it's not so in the Okanagan community. Okanagan's community is significant, then comes family, then comes the uh, individual. So these are the ideas Janet Armstrong, the great novelist, activist, educator and uh, indigenous uh, activist speak about in the essay, I stand with you against the disorder. Now we are just going to analyze the most significant questions from the very course book that is prescribed for the third semester uh, general in English okay so let us look at uh, the important uh, uh, questions name the river that flows through Okanagan and we know that the name of the river that flows through Okanagan is Columbia C-O-L-U-M-B-I-A number two to which ethnic group, tribe group does Armstrong's mother belong? We understand that uh, Armstrong's, Janet Armstrong's mother belongs to River Indian tribe. River Indian tribe. What is the meaning of the Okanagan word that refers to relationships? The very word that refers to relationships in Okanagan is our one skin. Our one skin. Which tribe is in charge of the fisheries in the British Columbia, especially in the Okanagan region? And we understand that uh, the tribe uh, in charge of the fisheries is the Kettle River people. The Kettle River people are in charge of the fisheries. Next question, the fifth question. Okanagans teach that the body is earth itself. We have to complete it. It's in fact... Uh, uh, a kind of uh, question in which the students have to complete the rest of the question. So the Okanagan teach that the body is dash, the earth is a body, is the earth itself. Now we come to the next uh, question. What are the four main capacities that operate together when the Okanagan speak of themselves as individuals? So when the Okanagan speak themselves as of individuals, they are referred to number one, the physical self, number two the emotional self number three the thinking intellectual self and number four the spiritual self so any individual is a combination of uh, the physical self the emotional self the thinking intellectual self and the spiritual self now what does the okanagan word for ourselves mean very important question what does the okanagan word for ourselves mean so Okanagan word for ourselves mean the ones who are dream and land together. The ones who are dream and land together. And next question, how do the Okanagans treat the body? The Okanagans treat the body as earth itself. The body is earth itself. The body is sacred. This is the very 
uh, educational principle or this is what the organizations teach their children. The organizations teach themselves and their children that the body is earth itself, the body is sacred. What word comes closest to the meaning of thinking intellectual self? The word that comes closest to the uh, Okanagan word is the spark that ignites. Question is very important. What word comes closest to the meaning of the thinking intellectual self? Answer is the spark that ignites. Now we come to the next question. What are the two rocky mountain ranges around Armstrong's birthplace? The two rocky mountain ranges around Armstrong's birthplace is uh, the Cascade on one side and the Selkirks on the other side. Now we come to the paragraph questions. We have uh, discussed uh, all, already the uh, important answers to all the paragraph questions. Still, we are just having a look at the paragraph questions. What is unique about the Okanagan educational practices? Next is, of course, right. How is the word relationship understood by the Okanagans? And uh, the word relationship uh, refers to, of course, right, uh, one skin. Everybody is having just one skin and uh, any individual is part of the community and the community is community is also part of the surrounding that is of course the earth what is the okanagan concept of the body right the body is sacred right and uh, we just come from the earth we just go to the earth right uh, so the earth is also sacred right this is the fundamental principle or concept of the body in okanagan explain the word that approximates the okanagan so the word that approximates the okanagan is the ones who are dream and land together. The ones who are dream and land together. So with this we can come to the end of uh, the discussion of uh, the essay by Janet Armstrong. I stand with you against the disorder. Thank you very much for listening. May God bless you.